The scent of roses filled the air as Rachel paced through the halls of the old church where her wedding rehearsal would be held in just a few hours. The entire space was meticulously decorated, each corner adorned with the soft whites, blush pinks, and elegant gold she had so carefully chosen. This wasn't just a wedding to her, it was the culmination of a year of intense planning, a dream she had nursed for as long as she could remember. Her phone buzzed, pulling her from her thoughts. It was her mother, Carol, a no-nonsense woman who had raised Rachel with the same meticulous standards she had instilled in her only child. Rachel, where are you? The caterers are asking about the seating arrangements for the wedding reception. Did you want the servers to have drink trays circulating outside, or do you want the cocktails only at the bar? Rachel took a steadying breath. Mom, I'm already handling it. They just need to follow the planned trays outside for mingling and bartenders inside for anything custom. All right, all right, it's just that you know how things can get if we don't keep our eyes on every little detail, her mother said, her voice laced with a hint of pride. After all, we can't have anything going wrong, can we? Rachel forced a smile, even though her mother couldn't see it. Exactly, Mom, I'll handle it. As her mother hung up, Rachel sighed and glanced at her reflection in one of the tall windows, catching the distant sparkle of the reception lights outside. She looked every bit the bride she had envisioned perfectly styled hair, a classic white blouse that flowed over a blush skirt, the picture of effortless grace. But the veneer of calm was only skin deep underneath, nerves bubbled up, fueled by a desire for absolute perfection. She knew people would be watching, judging. Everything needed to be flawless. Just then, her friend Layla, one of her bridesmaids, stepped into the room, carrying a small, sparkly box in her hands. Layla had been her friend since college a fun-loving, unapologetically bold woman with a knack for fashion that complemented Rachel's more reserved elegance. Layla's dark curls bounced as she walked over, a mischievous grin on her face. Rachel. I have something for you, Layla said, holding out the box. Rachel's eyes lit up. She opened it to reveal a delicate charm bracelet with tiny charms that represented memories they had shared over the years. Rachel's eyes softened. Layla, this is beautiful. Thank you. I thought you could use a little reminder of the good times Layla teased, nudging Rachel's shoulder gently, to keep you from going full bridezilla on us. Rachel rolled her eyes with a laugh. I'm not that bad, am I? Layla's grin widened. Let's just say, I'm happy to remind you that not every single thing has to be perfect. Rachel tried to laugh it off, but her gaze wandered to the door, checking her watch again. Where is Mia, she muttered, almost to herself. Mia Layla echoed, looking toward the door. She'll be here, Ratch. You know how she is, she's not the ten minutes early type. Rachel's jaw clenched slightly. Mia had been her best friend since they were children, but over the past year something had shifted. They'd once been inseparable, sharing secrets and dreams, promising to be there for each other through every major milestone. But as Rachel's life seemed to climb to new heights, Mia had seemed to drift further away, her own life mired in struggles that Rachel couldn't fully understand. Still, she had counted on Mia being here for her, to celebrate her big day like they'd always dreamed they would. Another bridesmaid, Samantha, entered the room with a drink in hand. She was one of Rachel's work colleagues, efficient and sharp a contrast to Mia's warm, laid-back nature. Samantha glanced around the room, her gaze shifting to the empty chair beside Rachel's. Is Mia late again, she asked with a raised eyebrow, barely masking her disapproval. Layla rolled her eyes but stayed silent, aware that any comment she made would only add fuel to the simmering tension in the room. Probably Rachel murmured, a hint of irritation in her voice. It's just, this is the rehearsal dinner, you know. I want everyone to be here. As if on cue, the door opened and Mia stepped into the room. Her smile was small and apologetic, and she smoothed her simple navy dress, clearly trying not to draw too much attention to herself. Rachel's eyes went to her outfit immediately, her heart sinking slightly at the sight of it. It wasn't the vibrant color scheme she'd selected for her bridesmaids. Mia's dress, a darker, understated shade, looked worn, even a little frayed at the hem, a stark contrast to the pristine pastels everyone else wore. Mia gave a small wave and walked over, her smile hesitant. Hey, Rachel. Sorry I'm late. Traffic was. Rachel barely heard her. Her mind was fixated on the dress, 
the one detail that seemed to stick out like a sore thumb in an otherwise perfectly orchestrated event. Mia noticed Rachel's expression falter and glanced down at her dress. Oh, um, is something wrong? Rachel took a breath, trying to keep her voice steady. No, it's just, I thought we agreed on the blush dresses. I mean, it's okay if you couldn't get it, but she trailed off, not wanting to make a scene. Mia bit her lip, glancing away for a moment. I'm sorry, I just couldn't manage it. This is all I had. Layla stepped forward, sensing the discomfort brewing. Rachel, come on. It's just the rehearsal. I think Mia looks great. Rachel forced a smile, though her unease remained. She didn't want to make Mia feel unwelcome, but the unspoken tension lingered between them. Thanks, Layla, Mia murmured, giving a small nod. She reached over to give Rachel a quick hug, her voice soft. I'm really happy for you, Ratch. Rachel's smile softened slightly, and she managed to push her unease aside, if only for a moment. Thanks, Mia. I'm glad you're here. The group settled into the rehearsal, but Rachel's mind continued to drift back to Mia's dress, each glance at it pulling her further out of the moment. It was like a tiny scratch on a polished surface seemingly insignificant, yet somehow impossible to ignore. She couldn't shake the feeling that Mia's choice had been a small rebellion, a disregard for the effort she had put into crafting every detail of this day. As the rehearsal came to a close, Rachel found herself lingering, catching her reflection in a nearby mirror, her eyes heavy with worry. This was supposed to be her dream, the day she had worked so hard to perfect. But Mia's unexpected choice felt like a betrayal, a reminder of the distance that had grown between them, a wound she had tried to ignore. As the group headed to the reserved area of the restaurant for the dinner, Rachel's mind kept replaying moments from the past year, each one a reminder of how things had changed between her and Mia. The late-night phone calls had dwindled, the spontaneous visits had stopped. And now here was Mia, wearing a dress that seemed almost deliberately out of place, as if she didn't belong here anymore. Rachel slid into her seat, Layla beside her with Mia across the table. Mia seemed quieter than usual, her gaze shifting from person to person, offering only brief smiles as conversations unfolded around her. Unable to resist, Rachel leaned forward, her voice low. Mia, about the dress. I didn't mean to make you feel uncomfortable, it's just that. Mia's eyes flickered with a hint of sadness. I know, Rachel. I didn't want to ruin anything. I just couldn't afford the dress you picked. Things have been a little tight lately. The admission caught Rachel off guard. She blinked, taken aback by the rawness in Mia's voice, a tone she hadn't heard in a long time. I didn't realize, Rachel said, her voice softening. She hadn't given much thought to Mia's situation, wrapped up as she was in her own world of wedding planning and perfection. Mia nodded, a faint smile tugging at her lips. It's fine, I just didn't want to bring it up. This is your day, and I want it to be everything you imagined. Rachel's heart tugged slightly. She could see that Mia was trying, that her friend was here despite her own struggles, willing to put aside whatever discomfort she felt. The rest of the evening went on, and Rachel tried to shake the uneasy feeling that had settled over her. She smiled, laughed, engaged in conversations, but her mind kept drifting back to Mia and the quiet resignation in her friend's eyes. Back at her apartment later that night, Rachel slipped out of her dress and sat by the window, staring at the city lights in the distance. Her phone buzzed and she glanced down to see a message from her mother. Just a reminder, make sure the bridesmaids are in perfect coordination tomorrow. We don't want any distractions, right? Rachel closed her eyes, guilt creeping up her spine. Her mother's words echoed in her mind, and she wondered if she had lost sight of what truly mattered. She thought of Mia, her best friend since childhood, the one person who had been by her side through every triumph and tear, now feeling like a stranger in her carefully crafted world. And tomorrow. Tomorrow was the big day. Rachel's wedding day dawned bright and clear, the morning sunlight streaming through the windows of the bridal suite at the grand estate her family had rented for the event. Everything about the day felt picture-perfect, the blue skies, the vibrant gardens below, the soft hum of activity as caterers, florists, and event staff hurried about their tasks. Rachel had hardly slept, but the sleeplessness wasn't from excitement. 
her mind kept returning to her conversation with Mia the night before. It was supposed to be the happiest day of her life, yet that one conversation lingered, creating a faint shadow over her mood. She hadn't anticipated the wave of empathy she'd felt for Mia, mixed with her frustration that Mia hadn't told her sooner. Still, Rachel reminded herself as she brushed her hair today was her day, and nothing not even this could derail it. She took a deep breath, smoothing her nerves. Mia would be there, and they'd celebrate together. They'd laugh, toast, and hopefully she'd be able to set aside this tension. Layla arrived first, greeting Rachel with her usual vivacious smile, a garment bag slung over her shoulder. Ready to make history, she teased, winking. Rachel smiled, her spirits lifting. More than ready. One by one, the bridesmaids trickled in, each wearing the blush pink dresses Rachel had chosen. Their laughter filled the suite as they helped each other with hair, jewelry, and makeup, exchanging compliments and funny stories. But Rachel noticed the subtle looks they exchanged, the way they glanced at Mia's empty seat, as if waiting for her arrival would solve an unspoken problem. It wasn't long before Mia walked in, her usual quiet presence softening the laughter in the room. Rachel's breath hitched. Mia was wearing the same dress she'd worn at the rehearsal dinner, the dark, frayed navy fabric looking even more out of place against the pastel hues surrounding her. The room fell silent for a beat, the air thick with awkwardness. Rachel could feel her heart drop as she looked at Mia, her face carefully composed. But behind the mask, Rachel could see a mixture of emotions flickering in Mia's eyes pride, self-consciousness, and perhaps a tinge of defiance. It was as if she were bracing herself, holding on tightly to her dignity. Hey, Mia, Rachel said softly, stepping forward to greet her friend, determined to hide any trace of disappointment in her voice. Mia's smile was small but genuine. Hey, Rach, you look absolutely stunning. Thank you, Rachel replied, her voice filled with warmth, yet her gaze kept drifting back to Mia's dress. She wanted to shake off her frustration, but it clung stubbornly amplified by the perfect scene surrounding them. Layla, always quick to jump in, tried to lighten the mood. Well, now that we're all here, let's get some bubbly going. Rachel, you're about to marry the love of your life. No time for anything but smiles and happy tears today. The room erupted into laughter, and everyone joined Layla in toasting Rachel. For a few moments, the tension dissipated, everyone's attention focused on celebrating the bride. Rachel caught herself smiling, genuinely feeling the joy of the moment. She looked around at her friends, the women who had been with her through thick and thin, and felt a swell of gratitude. But as the festivities continued, she couldn't ignore the nagging feeling each time she looked at Mia's dress, standing out so starkly against the coordinated pinks and soft florals. It felt like a distraction, a reminder of the dissonance that had grown between them. She knew it was petty, and she hated herself for feeling this way but the contrast was hard to ignore. Finally, Rachel took a deep breath, deciding she needed to address the issue before it soured her mood completely. She gently took Mia by the arm and guided her to a quieter corner of the suite. Mia, she began, struggling to find the right words. About your dress. I know things have been hard, and I don't want to sound ungrateful. I'm so glad you're here. But, why didn't you tell me earlier? Mia's face flushed her expression shifting from surprise to guarded defensiveness. She looked away, her fingers twisting the edge of her dress. I didn't want to burden you with my problems, Rachel. This is your big day, I thought. I thought I could just make it work. Rachel's shoulders relaxed slightly, but she pressed on, not quite able to shake her own frustrations. I understand, but this is important to me. I wanted everything to be just right. You know how much I've planned for this. Mia nodded, her gaze dropping to the floor. I know, and I'm sorry. I just... I didn't want to make you worry. Rachel let out a soft sigh, torn between sympathy and a lingering frustration. She reached out, giving Mia's hand a gentle squeeze. Okay, let's just... enjoy the day. You're here, and that's what matters. Mia's face softened, and she gave Rachel a small, grateful smile. Thank you, Rachel. I'll try not to be in the way. The words stung in a way Rachel hadn't expected. She opened her mouth to reassure Mia but stopped herself, unable to find the right words. As much as she wanted to ease Mia's discomfort, her own feelings of betrayal and disappointment clouded her judgment. As they rejoined the group, 
Rachel tried to push her thoughts aside, focusing on the joy of the moment. But she noticed the other bridesmaids exchanging glances, their eyes flickering toward Mia. She knew they were wondering the same thing she had been, sensing the tension but unsure of how to respond. The bridal suite grew busier as the final preparations were made. Photographers arrived, capturing candid shots of the bridesmaids helping Rachel into her dress, adjusting her veil, and offering last-minute touch-ups. The energy in the room was electric, buzzing with excitement and anticipation. Yet amid the excitement, Rachel couldn't shake the subtle sense of unease that Mia's presence seemed to bring. She wanted desperately to let it go, to focus on the joy and beauty of her wedding day, but her mind kept circling back to Mia's dress, the unspoken symbol of everything that had shifted between them. As the time for the ceremony approached, the bridal party lined up outside the chapel. Guests filled the seats inside, the quiet hum of conversation adding to the air of anticipation. Rachel took a deep breath, steadying herself, the weight of the moment settling on her shoulders. Layla squeezed her hand, whispering, This is it, Rach. Everything you've dreamed of. Rachel nodded, her heart pounding as the music began to play. One by one, the bridesmaids filed down the aisle, their dresses a soft wave of pink, creating a harmonious scene Rachel had envisioned for so long. As Mia stepped forward, Rachel felt a pang of guilt but quickly brushed it aside. Today was about her and her soon-to-be husband. She deserved this moment, even if not every detail was as perfect as she had planned. The ceremony unfolded beautifully, each word and gesture charged with emotion. Standing hand in hand with her groom, Rachel felt the worries of the past few days melt away. She looked out at the gathered faces of her friends and family, their smiles and tears a testament to the love they shared for her and her new husband. But as her gaze drifted to Mia, standing off to the side with the other bridesmaids, she felt a tug at her heart, a reminder of the complicated layers beneath the joy of this moment. The reception was held in a grand ballroom, adorned with cascading flowers, glittering lights, and elegant table settings. Rachel's parents had spared no expense, and the result was a scene straight out of a fairy tale. Guests mingled, laughter filled the air, and glasses clinked in toasts to the happy couple. Rachel moved through the room, greeting friends and family, her heart swelling with gratitude for the love surrounding her. Yet every now and then, her eyes found Mia, who sat quietly at one of the tables, a faint smile on her lips, as she watched the festivities unfold. Mia seemed withdrawn, a contrast to the lively atmosphere, her dark dress a muted shadow among the vibrant colors and joyful faces. As the night wore on, Rachel noticed her parents glancing disapprovingly in Mia's direction. She knew they'd noticed the dress as well, their expressions reflecting a silent judgment. Rachel's mother caught her eye, raising an eyebrow as if to ask why Mia hadn't made an effort to blend in with the rest. Unable to bear the weight of their silent questioning, Rachel made her way over to Mia's table. She knelt beside her, putting on her best smile. Hey Mia, you okay? You look a little… distant. Mia's smile was faint, almost forced. I'm fine, just taking it all in. It's beautiful, Rachel. Everything is perfect. Rachel felt a pang of guilt at the word, perfect knowing how much she had fretted over every detail, including Mia's dress. She wanted to say something comforting, to bridge the gap that had grown between them, but the words felt heavy and inadequate. Instead, she found herself blurting out, I just… I wish you'd told me. About the dress, I mean. Maybe I could have helped. Mia's eyes softened, but there was a hint of something unreadable in her expression. I know, Rack. But it's okay. You have so much on your plate already. I didn't want to add to it. Rachel opened her mouth to respond but found herself at a loss. She wanted to explain her feelings, to let Mia know how much her friendship meant to her, but the words felt hollow in the face of the subtle hurt lingering between them. As Rachel moved back to her table, a sense of melancholy settled over her, overshadowing the joy of the celebration. The dress had become a symbol of everything that had changed, a reminder of the distance that had grown between them. And despite her efforts to move past it, the feeling persisted, casting a shadow over an otherwise perfect day. As the reception progressed, Rachel found herself swept up in the rhythm of the evening speeches, dances and endless congratulations from family and friends. Every time she glanced at her new husband, her heart surged with love and excitement. 
This was supposed to be the happiest night of her life, and in many ways it was. But despite the joy of the evening, Rachel couldn't ignore the subtle discord that lingered like an unwanted guest. She caught herself scanning the room, her gaze often landing on Mia, who seemed to be slipping further into the background. Rachel's heart tugged at the sight her best friend looked out of place, like she was a shadow of her former self. The memory of their confrontation earlier in the day replayed in her mind, each moment reminding her of the unspoken tensions that had gradually driven a wedge between them. As the music changed to a slower tune, Rachel excused herself from a group of guests and made her way to Mia's table. Mia sat alone, her fingers tracing the rim of her glass, her gaze distant as she watched the couple swaying on the dance floor. She seemed lost in thought, her face softened by a faint, melancholic smile. Hey, Rachel said gently, pulling up a chair beside her. I thought you might want some company. Mia looked up, surprised. She offered Rachel a small smile, her eyes holding a mixture of gratitude and hesitation. Thanks, Ratch. I didn't want to get in the way. You're not in the way, Mia Rachel replied, her voice barely a whisper. You're my best friend. You're supposed to be here with me. Mia's expression faltered, a flicker of pain crossing her face. Sometimes it doesn't feel that way, though. Rachel's heart clenched. She knew there was a lot left unsaid between them, emotions that had built up over the past year, festering quietly beneath the surface. She reached for Mia's hand, giving it a gentle squeeze. Mia, talk to me. I know things have been different lately. I want to understand. Mia took a deep breath, her gaze dropping to their joined hands. It's just. Seeing you here, with everything so perfect, makes me realize how much things have changed between us. I feel like I've fallen so far behind, Ratch. Like I don't fit into your world anymore. Rachel felt a pang of guilt, but she struggled to understand. Mia, I don't want you to feel that way. We've been through so much together. You'll always be a part of my life, no matter what. Mia's smile was sad, a hint of bitterness creeping into her voice. It doesn't always feel that way. Lately it's like, you've been living this life that I can't keep up with. Every time we talk, it's about the wedding, your new job, your plans for the future. And here I am, just, trying to make ends meet. Rachel's heart ached as she listened to her friend's confession. She hadn't realized how distant she had become, wrapped up in her own world of planning and perfection. Mia. I'm so sorry, I never wanted to make you feel like you didn't matter. I just, I didn't know. Mia's gaze softened, but the hurt remained. I know you didn't mean to, but sometimes it feels like, like our friendship only fits when it's convenient for you. The words stung, piercing Rachel's carefully constructed image of herself as a loyal friend. She opened her mouth to defend herself, but stopped, realizing that there was truth in Mia's words. She had been so focused on her own dreams that she hadn't considered the struggles her best friend was facing. Mia continued, her voice soft but resolute. This dress. I know it's not what you wanted, and I know it doesn't fit with the perfect image of today. But this is all I have, Rach. It's a reminder of my mom she wore this to her wedding years ago. It's the one nice thing she passed down to me before. Before she got sick. Rachel's breath caught in her throat, her heart heavy with guilt and sorrow. She hadn't known. She'd been so consumed by her own disappointment that she hadn't considered the significance of Mia's choice. In that moment, the dress transformed in her mind from a mismatched detail to a cherished memory, a link to a past filled with love and sacrifice. Oh, Mia. I didn't realize Rachel's voice trembled, her eyes glistening with unshed tears. I'm so sorry I was so focused on making everything perfect that I didn't even think about what you might be going through. Mia's eyes softened, her gaze filled with a mixture of sadness and forgiveness. It's okay, Rachel. I didn't expect you to understand. I just, I wanted to be here for you, even if I don't fit in anymore. Rachel shook her head, her heart aching with regret. No, you do fit in, Mia. You always have. I'm the one who's been too blind to see it. The two friends sat in silence, the weight of their conversation settling between them. Rachel felt a sense of clarity she hadn't felt in months, a realization that her relentless pursuit of perfection had cost her something far more valuable than a flawless wedding. After a few moments, Mia offered a small smile, 
her hand reaching out to touch Rachel's cheek. You know, I don't blame you, Rach. I know this day means everything to you. I just, I needed you to see that I'm still here, even if I can't give you everything you want. Rachel took a deep breath, her resolve strengthening. You being here means more than you know, Mia. I don't care about the dress or the details. I just, I don't want to lose you. Mia's smile grew, her eyes shining with gratitude. Then let's just be here together. No more pretending. Rachel nodded, a sense of peace settling over her. She pulled Mia into a tight embrace, holding her friend close, the weight of their shared history and mutual forgiveness washing over them like a balm. Later that evening, as the celebration wound down and guests began to say their goodbyes, Rachel found herself reflecting on the events of the day. The joy, the laughter, the love it had all been more than she could have ever dreamed. But it was the quiet moments, the vulnerable confessions and heartfelt apologies that lingered most deeply in her heart. Rachel watched as Mia moved toward the exit, her dark dress trailing behind her like a shadow. For the first time, she saw it not as a flaw but as a symbol of resilience, a testament to Mia's strength and loyalty. Rachel took a deep breath, feeling a sense of clarity and purpose. She knew what she needed to do. Wait, Mia, she called, hurrying across the room to catch up with her friend. Mia turned, her expression curious. Yes. Rachel paused, searching for the right words. I, I want you to know that this day wouldn't have been complete without you. And I want everyone here to understand that too. Mia's eyes widened, a mixture of surprise and gratitude filling her gaze. Rachel, you don't have to. But Rachel shook her head her voice filled with determination. No, Mia, you're my best friend, and you've been here for me through everything. It's time I let everyone know how much you mean to me. Taking a deep breath, Rachel turned to the remaining guests, raising her glass in a final toast. Her voice was steady, filled with conviction as she addressed the room. Everyone, I just want to say a few more words before we end this beautiful night. I know today has been a celebration of love and commitment, and I couldn't be happier. But I also want to acknowledge someone who has been there for me in ways that no one else has. She looked at Mia, her eyes brimming with gratitude. Mia has been my friend since we were kids. She has always been there, through every moment of joy and heartache, always putting others before herself. Today she wore a dress that wasn't part of the plan, but it represents so much more than I could have ever understood. Rachel's voice softened, her gaze holding Mia's. It's a symbol of love, sacrifice, and the strength it takes to keep going, even when things aren't perfect. And that's exactly what true friendship is about. A hush fell over the room as Rachel's words resonated with the guests, many of whom were visibly moved by the depth of her emotions. Mia's eyes shimmered with tears, a faint smile gracing her lips as she took in the sincerity of Rachel's words. To Mia, Rachel continued, raising her glass high, her voice filled with unwavering affection. Thank you for being the best friend anyone could ask for. I love you, and I am so grateful that you're here with me today. The guests joined in the toast, raising their glasses to Mia, their expressions filled with admiration and respect. Mia's cheeks flushed, her eyes sparkling with gratitude as she clinked her glass against Rachel's, the gesture sealing a renewed bond between them. As the final strains of music played and the guests dispersed, Rachel and Mia stood together, their hands clasped, their eyes filled with a newfound understanding. They had faced their fears, laid bare their insecurities, and emerged stronger, bound by a friendship that had weathered the storms of life. For Rachel, the pursuit of perfection had given way to a deeper truth one that reminded her that true happiness didn't lie in flawless details, but in the imperfect, cherished connections that made life worth living. And as she looked at Mia, her heart swelled with a sense of peace she hadn't felt in years. She knew, with absolute certainty, that this was the beginning of a new chapter one built on honesty, forgiveness, and a friendship that would endure through all that life had yet to bring. As the night wore on, the initial warmth of Rachel's toast gradually faded, replaced by the unspoken strain that lingered between her and Mia. Even though Rachel had tried to express her gratitude publicly, a part of her sensed that words alone couldn't mend the deepening rift between them. The few guests who remained were milling around in small groups chatting quietly as the music softened, casting a peaceful yet reflective ambience over the room. Rachel felt her husband's hand slip into hers, his touch grounding her. 
She leaned into him, grateful for the steady presence he offered amid the swirling emotions that filled her heart. But her gaze kept wandering to Mia, who was standing near one of the grand windows, gazing out into the night, lost in thought. Rachel couldn't shake the feeling that their earlier conversation had only scratched the surface of Mia's pain. After a moment Rachel released her husband's hand and made her way over to Mia, her footsteps soft against the polished floor. She could feel her heart pounding, a mixture of nervousness and determination fueling her approach. Mia, she said quietly as she came to stand beside her friend, her voice gentle but firm. Can we talk? Aye. I feel like there's more we need to say. Mia turned to her, her eyes reflecting a mix of exhaustion and resignation. She nodded slowly, her posture tense but willing. All right, Rachel. Rachel gestured toward a quiet corner of the room, away from the last few guests who were lingering near the exit. They took seats opposite each other, the atmosphere between them heavy with anticipation. For a few moments, neither of them spoke, each waiting for the other to break the silence. Finally, Rachel took a deep breath, deciding to lay her feelings bare. Mia, I don't want us to go on like this, she began, her voice trembling with the weight of her words. You're my best friend, and I hate that things have gotten so complicated between us. Mia looked away, her fingers tracing patterns on the table's surface. It's just, things have changed, Rachel. Sometimes it feels like we're living in two different worlds. Rachel felt a pang of sadness, but she pressed on, determined to understand. I know I've been busy with the wedding and everything, but that doesn't mean I don't care about you, Mia. You're still my closest friend, no matter what. Mia's gaze softened, but there was a flicker of frustration in her expression. It's not just about the wedding, Rachel. It's about everything. The job, the apartment, the lifestyle. I just feel like I don't belong in your world anymore. Rachel's brow furrowed as she listened, realizing that Mia's feelings went far deeper than she had initially understood. Mia. I don't care about any of that. I don't need you to be on the same path as me. I just want you by my side like you've always been. Mia let out a soft sigh, her shoulders slumping. It's not that simple, Rachel. You're doing amazing things, living this life that feels so perfect. And here I am, struggling just to keep my head above water. I can't help but feel like, like I'm a burden to you. Rachel's heart ached at the vulnerability in Mia's voice a stark contrast to the confident friend she had always known. She reached out, placing a hand over Mia's, her touch gentle and reassuring. Mia, you're not a burden. I'm sorry if I ever made you feel that way. I've been so wrapped up in my own world that I didn't stop to think about how you were feeling. I just, I don't want to lose you. Mia's eyes glistened with unshed tears, and for a moment Rachel thought she might have reached her friend. But then, Mia's expression hardened slightly, her voice tinged with a bitterness Rachel hadn't expected. It's not just about feeling left behind, Rachel. It's about the fact that I don't think you see me anymore. You've been so focused on building this perfect life, on curating every little detail, that I feel like I'm just an accessory in your story, like I only matter when I fit into your plans. The accusation cut deep and Rachel felt her cheeks flush, a mixture of guilt and defensiveness rising within her. Mia, that's not true. You know how much I care about you. Mia shook her head, a sad smile playing on her lips. I don't doubt that you care, Rachel, but sometimes. Caring isn't enough. Sometimes people need to feel seen, to feel like they matter on their own terms, not just as part of someone else's perfect picture. Rachel felt a lump forming in her throat, her mind racing as she tried to process Mia's words. She wanted to argue, to defend herself, but deep down, she knew that Mia's feelings were valid. She had been so focused on her own vision of happiness that she hadn't stopped to consider how it might impact the people around her. I'm sorry, Mia, Rachel whispered, her voice choked with emotion. I never wanted you to feel that way. I thought, I thought I was doing what was best for both of us. I thought I was inspiring you. Mia's smile was bittersweet, a mixture of affection and resignation. Inspiring me? Rachel, you don't need to inspire me. You just need to be my friend to see me for who I am, flaws and all. Rachel felt the sting of tears in her eyes, her heart heavy with regret. She had always prided herself on being a good friend, on being supportive and loyal, but in her pursuit of perfection she had lost sight of what truly mattered. 
I see you, Mia Rachel said softly, her voice filled with sincerity. I see how strong you are, how resilient. I see everything you've been through and I respect you so much for it. I just, I don't want to lose you. Mia's gaze softened, her expression filled with a mixture of sadness and understanding. She reached out, giving Rachel's hand a reassuring squeeze. I don't want to lose you either, Rach. But if we're going to make this work, we need to be honest with each other. No more pretending, no more fitting into each other's expectations. Just us as we are. Rachel nodded, her heart swelling with a mixture of relief and hope. She felt a sense of clarity, a renewed understanding of what it meant to be a true friend. It wasn't about perfection or fitting into each other's lives, it was about accepting each other, flaws and all. The two friends sat in silence for a few moments, their hands clasped, their hearts filled with a newfound sense of peace. They had faced their fears, laid bare their insecurities, and emerged stronger, bound by a friendship that had weathered the storms of life. After their conversation, the weight of the evening seemed to lift, the tension between them easing as they returned to the festivities. Rachel felt a sense of liberation, a freedom that came from finally letting go of her relentless pursuit of perfection. She looked at Mia, her friend, her sister in every way that mattered, and felt a surge of gratitude for the bond they shared. As the final guests trickled out and the music faded, Rachel and Mia stood side by side, their hands intertwined, their smiles genuine and unburdened. They had navigated the challenges of friendship, confronted their fears, and found their way back to each other. For Rachel, the night had been a journey of self-discovery, a reminder that true happiness wasn't found in flawless details, but in the imperfect cherished connections that made life worth living. And as they left the ballroom together, Rachel knew that this was only the beginning of a new chapter one built on honesty, forgiveness, and a friendship that would endure through all that life had yet to bring. The days following the wedding left Rachel in a reflective haze. Every moment seemed to replay itself in her mind the ceremony, the reception, and especially that final heartfelt conversation with Mia. She couldn't shake the feeling that the wedding, beautiful as it had been, had become something she hadn't quite anticipated a revelation of how easily she'd let her ideals overshadow her relationships. Rachel sat in her living room, surrounded by unopened wedding gifts and an array of photographs from the day. She was flipping through the images when she stopped on one that caught her eye a candid shot of Mia. In it, Mia stood slightly to the side, her expression pensive, almost resigned. Her dark dress was striking against the pale pastel of the wedding decor, a quiet rebellion against the orchestrated perfection around her. Rachel stared at the photo, the weight of her actions settling heavily over her, she had forced Mia into the backdrop of her carefully curated vision, relegating her friend to the role of an accessory, just as Mia had said. But seeing the picture now, Rachel couldn't deny it. It was a stark reminder of the toll her obsession with perfection had taken not only on her friendship with Mia but on herself. Her husband entered the room, glancing over her shoulder at the photograph. He paused, his brow furrowing slightly as he studied the image. She looks. Out of place, doesn't she? Rachel nodded, her voice soft. I didn't see it that way at the time. I was so focused on everything going right, on everyone playing their part, that I didn't even notice how she felt she looked up, her eyes filled with a deep sadness. I think I let her down. Her husband squeezed her shoulder gently. You can make it right, Rachel. Talk to her. Really talk to her. Rachel nodded, determination flickering in her eyes. She knew she needed to confront the reality of her actions, and more importantly, to understand the depth of what Mia had been trying to communicate. Their last conversation had opened a wound, but it was one that Rachel knew needed to heal if they were going to rebuild their friendship. The following weekend, Rachel reached out to Mia, inviting her over for tea. She was nervous as she prepared the living room, arranging comfortable seating and setting out Mia's favorite tea blend. Her heart pounded as she anticipated their conversation unsure of how to express everything she had come to realize. When Mia arrived, Rachel greeted her with a tentative smile, motioning her inside. Mia returned the smile, though there was a guarded quality in her eyes, as if she were still unsure of what to expect. They exchanged a few pleasantries, but the tension between them was palpable, each of them waiting for the other to break the silence. Finally, as they settled into their seats, Rachel took a deep breath, gathering her thoughts. Mia, I wanted to thank you for coming over. I know things have been 
complicated lately, and I wanted to take some time to really talk, to listen. Mia nodded, her posture tense but open. I appreciate that, Rachel. I think we both have a lot to say. Rachel hesitated, then looked at her friend with sincere regret. Mia, I know I haven't been the friend you needed me to be. I let my obsession with the wedding, with everything looking perfect, get in the way of what really matters. I was so focused on making everything beautiful that I didn't stop to see what was right in front of me. She paused, her eyes glistening. I didn't see you. Mia's gaze softened, though her expression remained pained. Rachel, I understand that the wedding was important to you. I wanted to support you, to be there for you. But I couldn't help feeling like I didn't belong, like there was no place for me in this life you were building. Rachel's heart ached at Mia's words. She could hear the sadness in her friend's voice, the loneliness that had been buried beneath their years of shared laughter and memories. I never wanted you to feel that way, Mia. You've always been my best friend. You've been there through everything. Mia's gaze dropped to her hands, her fingers tracing patterns on her teacup. It's just... Lately, it feels like everything I am, everything I have, is just a reminder of what you've moved beyond. You have this perfect life, this amazing future. And here I am struggling just to keep things together. Rachel reached out, covering Mia's hand with her own. Mia, please don't think that I see you that way. I don't care about the differences in our lives. I care about you. I care about who you are, everything you've been through. You're not just part of my past, you're part of my present, my future. Mia looked up, her eyes shimmering with tears. It's hard, Rachel. It's hard to feel like I'm enough when everything around me is falling apart. My mom's health, my job, everything, it just feels like I'm constantly fighting to stay afloat. Rachel's heart swelled with compassion, a new understanding blossoming within her. She had been so focused on her own pursuits, her own dreams, that she had overlooked the battles Mia was fighting every day. She realized now that Mia's resilience, her quiet strength, was a testament to the kind of person she had always been. Mia, Rachel said, her voice filled with tenderness. I had no idea you were going through so much. I should have been there for you. I should have taken the time to see what was happening in your life, instead of just focusing on mine. Mia managed a small smile, though it was tinged with sadness. I didn't want to burden you, Rach, I thought. I thought if I could just get through it, if I could just hold on, things would get better. But sometimes I just needed someone to see me, to acknowledge that I was struggling. Rachel's eyes filled with tears as she listened, the weight of Mia's words sinking into her heart. She had been so blinded by her own vision of happiness that she hadn't recognized the quiet resilience that Mia embodied every day. Mia, I see you now, Rachel whispered, her voice choked with emotion. I see everything you've been through and I admire you more than I can say. You're not just part of my life, you're part of who I am. And I want to be there for you in every way I can. Mia's eyes shimmered, a faint smile tugging at her lips. Thank you, Rachel. That means more than you know. They sat in silence for a few moments, their hands still joined, the bond between them feeling stronger, more unbreakable than ever. For the first time, Rachel felt a sense of peace, a deep understanding of what it truly meant to be a friend. After a while, Mia took a deep breath, breaking the silence. You know, Rachel, I didn't wear that dress to hurt you. It was my mom's from her wedding. It was the one thing she gave me that made me feel like I was carrying a piece of her with me. I wore it because... I wanted her to be there with me, even if only in spirit. Rachel felt a lump form in her throat, her eyes filling with tears once more. Mia, I'm so sorry. I didn't understand. I was so focused on how things looked, on making everything perfect, that I completely missed the meaning behind it. I wish. I wish I had known sooner. Mia's smile was soft, forgiving. It's okay, Rachel. I know you didn't mean to overlook it. I know you just wanted everything to be beautiful to be exactly the way you dreamed. Rachel nodded, a wave of gratitude washing over her. She realized now that beauty wasn't found in perfection, but in the love and support that people brought into her life. Mia's dress, with its worn fabric and faded memories, was more beautiful than any coordinated pastel could have been. It was a testament to love, to resilience, to the strength that had carried Mia through her darkest moments. Thank you, Mia, Rachel whispered, her voice filled with emotion. Thank you for being here with me, for always being my friend. I don't deserve your forgiveness, but I'm so grateful for it. Mia reached out, pulling Rachel into a tight embrace. 
We all make mistakes, Ratch. What matters is that we learn from them, that we grow together. That's what friends are for. Rachel held her friend close, her heart swelling with a mixture of love and gratitude. In that moment, she knew that this was the beginning of a new chapter for both of them, a chapter built on honesty, understanding, and an unbreakable bond that would carry them through whatever lay ahead. As they pulled away, Rachel looked into Mia's eyes, a sense of clarity and peace settling over her. She knew now that true beauty wasn't found in flawless decor or perfect plans. It was found in the moments of vulnerability, in the strength of their friendship, in the shared memories that bound them together. The two friends shared a quiet laugh, the weight of the past few months lifting as they finally found solace in each other's presence. They knew that the road ahead wouldn't always be easy, but they were ready to face it together, their friendship stronger than ever. And as they sat together, sipping tea and reminiscing about old memories, Rachel felt a sense of contentment she hadn't known before. She realized now that life's true treasures weren't found in grand gestures or elaborate plans. They were found in the quiet, unassuming moments shared with those who truly understood her, who loved her for who she was imperfections and all. In that moment, Surrounded by love and forgiveness, Rachel knew that she had finally found her perfect day. As Rachel and Mia sat together in the warm, comforting light of the living room, their conversation drifted to memories of their childhood, shared dreams, and the countless moments that had forged their bond. It was as if through this conversation they were rediscovering each other, peeling back the layers that had been shrouded by misunderstandings and expectations. Do you remember that summer we tried to build a treehouse, Rachel asked? a faint smile playing on her lips as she leaned back, the memories rushing in. Mia laughed, her eyes lighting up with a mixture of nostalgia and amusement. How could I forget? We had no idea what we were doing. You kept insisting that we didn't need nails because we could just stack the boards. Rachel chuckled, shaking her head at the memory. We were so determined. And you tried to convince your mom that you needed her kitchen pots for construction purposes. The two of them shared a warm, genuine laugh, the kind that only years of shared history could foster. It was a relief to feel that connection again, to remember that beneath the layers of adult responsibilities and life changes, they were still the same girls who had once dreamed of conquering the world together. Mia's laughter faded, her gaze softening as she looked at Rachel. You know, Raksh, I've always admired you. Even back then, you were so sure of what you wanted. You had this way of making things happen even if they didn't make sense to anyone else. Rachel felt a warmth spread through her, touched by Mia's words. I guess I never thought of it that way. I just, I wanted things to be beautiful, to create something that felt special. But somewhere along the line, I think I started to believe that special meant perfect. Mia nodded, her expression thoughtful. And I think I got so wrapped up in my own struggles that I lost sight of what mattered too. I thought that if I didn't have the same things as you, if I wasn't on the same path, then maybe I didn't deserve to be in your life anymore. Rachel's heart ached at the vulnerability in Mia's voice. She reached out, placing a hand over Mia's, her voice filled with conviction. Mia, you've always deserved to be in my life. I just, I was too blind to see it. I let my own insecurities, my own need for control, get in the way of appreciating the people I care about. Mia smiled, her eyes brimming with a mixture of forgiveness and understanding. I think we both lost our way a little, didn't we? Rachel nodded, her gaze steady. Yeah, but maybe that's okay. Maybe losing our way helped us find what really matters. They sat in comfortable silence. The air between them filled with a sense of mutual acceptance. It was as if through this conversation they had shed the weight of unspoken expectations, of silent comparisons and hidden resentments. In their place, there was only the quiet, unbreakable bond that had carried them through so much. After a while, Mia spoke, her voice soft but steady. I know things won't be easy from here on out, Rachel. We both have our own paths, our own struggles. But I think, if we're honest with each other, we can make it work. Rachel squeezed Mia's hand, a renewed sense of determination filling her. I know we can. And I want you to know that I'm here for you, no matter what. I don't care about where we're going or what we're doing, I just care about having you by my side. Mia's eyes sparkled with gratitude, a faint smile tugging at her lips. Thank you, Rachel. That means more to me than you know. They shared a quiet moment, the silence filled with the unspoken promises that would guide their friendship moving forward. 
For Rachel, it was a moment of clarity, a realization that true friendship wasn't about appearances or accomplishments. It was about the small acts of kindness, the quiet support, and the unwavering belief in each other's worth. As the evening wore on, Rachel felt a sense of peace settle over her. She knew that the journey ahead wouldn't always be easy, that there would be challenges and moments of doubt. But she also knew that she and Mia had found something unbreakable, a foundation built on honesty, compassion, and a newfound understanding of each other. In that moment, surrounded by the warmth of her friend's presence, Rachel knew that they were ready to face whatever life had in store. And as they shared one last embrace, she felt a deep sense of gratitude for the love and resilience that had brought them back together. In the weeks following Rachel and Mia's conversation, life settled into a quieter, more reflective rhythm. The buzz of the wedding had faded, leaving Rachel with a newfound sense of purpose and clarity. For the first time in years, she felt content in ways that didn't rely on meticulously planned events or perfectly curated images. Instead, her focus had shifted to something deeper, her relationships, her friendships, and the quiet, often overlooked joys of everyday life. One Sunday afternoon, Rachel found herself in her kitchen, baking a batch of cookies, a recipe Mia's mom had once shared with them. The scent of vanilla and chocolate filled the air, wrapping around her like a warm embrace. Baking had never been one of Rachel's strong suits, but today the cookies didn't need to be perfect. She just wanted to surprise Mia to thank her for being there, for forgiving her, and for reminding her of what truly mattered. The timer dinged and Rachel pulled the cookies from the oven, a mix of golden and slightly overbrowned edges. She laughed to herself, imagining Mia's amused expression when she saw them. As she packed them into a tin, she thought about the times they'd shared in Mia's tiny kitchen, laughing over slightly burnt cookies and lopsided cakes. With a warm smile, Rachel finished packing the tin and headed out. The walk to Mia's apartment was short, a familiar path she hadn't taken in too long. As she walked, she noticed the details of the neighborhood she had often overlooked the bright flowers blooming in small gardens, the way the sun filtered through the trees, casting dappled shadows on the sidewalk. Each step felt like a new discovery, a reminder of the simple pleasure she had too often ignored. When she reached Mia's apartment, Rachel took a deep breath, a small thrill of anticipation bubbling in her chest. She knocked, and a moment later, Mia opened the door, her face lighting up with surprise. Rachel, what are you doing here? Mia asked, her expression warm and welcoming. Rachel held up the tin, grinning. I come bearing slightly burnt cookies. Thought you might be able to help me with quality control. Mia laughed, stepping aside to let Rachel in. You're really spoiling me, Ratch. First the tea, now cookies. I could get used to this. Rachel shrugged, her smile playful. Well, don't get too comfortable. My baking skills still leave a lot to be desired. They moved into Mia's cozy living room, settling on the couch as they each took a cookie. The atmosphere was relaxed, the tension that had once lingered between them completely gone. Rachel felt a warmth spread through her as they chatted, the easy, unguarded comfort of true friendship filling the room. As they talked, Rachel found herself sharing parts of her life she hadn't spoken about in a long time, her fears about her career, her doubts about her goals, the nagging feeling that her pursuit of perfection had left her disconnected from the things that really mattered. Mia listened, her expression compassionate, her support unwavering. She didn't judge or offer solutions, she simply listened, giving Rachel the space to express herself without the weight of expectations or criticism. It was a feeling Rachel hadn't experienced in years, a reminder of the power of true friendship. As the afternoon sun cast a warm glow over the room, Rachel felt a sense of peace settle over her, a quiet certainty that she was exactly where she needed to be. This moment, this connection, was worth more than any grand achievement or flawless event. It was real, and it was enough. In the days that followed, Rachel found herself embracing a new approach to life. She began to focus less on outward appearances and more on the connections she had neglected. She started calling her friends more often, catching up without a specific agenda, simply enjoying the chance to hear about their lives. At work, Rachel made an effort to connect with her colleagues on a personal level, asking about their families, their hobbies, and their dreams. She found herself laughing more, worrying less, and finding joy in the small, unplanned moments that filled her days. 
Her husband noticed the change too, and one evening, as they shared a quiet dinner at home, he reached across the table taking her hand in his. You seem. Different, he said, his voice filled with warmth, happier, more relaxed. I like seeing you this way. Rachel smiled, her heart swelling with gratitude. I think, I think I finally figured out what I was missing. I spent so long trying to make everything perfect, but now I realize that perfection doesn't bring happiness. It's the people we love, the moments we share. That's what really matters. Her husband squeezed her hand, his smile filled with pride. I'm so glad you found that, Rachel. It's a beautiful thing to see. Rachel felt a warmth spread through her, a sense of contentment she hadn't known before. She knew that her journey was far from over, that there would still be challenges and moments of doubt. But she also knew that she had a newfound strength, a resilience built on love and acceptance, and a friendship that had shown her the path to true happiness. As the weeks turned into months, Rachel continued to nurture her friendships, especially with Mia. They started a weekly tradition of Sunday tea, a quiet time to catch up, share stories and simply enjoy each other's presence. They laughed about the past, dreamed about the future, and found comfort in the knowledge that their bond was stronger than ever. One Sunday as they sat together Mia looked at Rachel, her expression thoughtful. Ratch, I wanted to thank you. For everything. I know things got tough but… You really showed me what friendship means. Rachel's heart swelled with emotion, a deep sense of gratitude filling her. No, Mia. Thank you. You were the one who reminded me of what's important, who helped me see beyond my own expectations. I wouldn't be here without you. They shared a smile, a quiet understanding passing between them. In that moment they knew that their friendship had weathered the storms, that it had emerged stronger, more resilient, and more beautiful than ever. As they raised their cups in a silent toast to the future, Rachel felt a sense of peace settle over her. She knew that, no matter what lay ahead, she and Mia would face it together, their friendship a beacon of love and support that would guide them through whatever life had in store. A few months had passed since Rachel's wedding, and as autumn settled over the city, Rachel felt as though she were experiencing her life with fresh eyes. The colors of the changing leaves, the crispness of the air, and even the busy hum of city life all seemed more vivid, more beautiful. It was as though, in letting go of her need for perfection, she had uncovered a world filled with quiet joys she had previously overlooked. One Saturday morning, Rachel woke up early, a renewed sense of excitement filling her. She and Mia had planned a small gathering with a few close friends to celebrate Mia's recent achievements at work. Mia had recently been promoted, her dedication and resilience finally paying off after years of hard work, and Rachel was thrilled to be able to celebrate her friend's success. As Rachel prepared for the gathering, she found herself savoring each moment the smell of freshly brewed coffee, the laughter that would soon fill her home, the anticipation of sharing this special day with the people she cared about. She took her time setting out snacks, arranging flowers, and placing photos from her wedding and other happy moments with friends around the living room. The pictures weren't all perfectly framed, and a few were even slightly askew, but Rachel loved the charm they added. When the doorbell rang, Rachel's heart leapt with excitement. She opened the door to see Mia standing there, holding a bouquet of wildflowers, her face lit up with a radiant smile. Hey, wrecked Mia greeted her, stepping inside and giving Rachel a warm hug. I brought you these. I know you said not to bring anything, but I couldn't resist. Rachel smiled, taking the flowers and breathing in their earthy, sweet scent. Thank you, Mia, they're beautiful. Mia glanced around the living room her gaze lingering on the photos and the small details that made Rachel's home feel warm and welcoming. This place looks amazing, Ratch. It's like a little piece of you. Rachel's smile softened. Thanks, Mia. I guess I finally stopped worrying about everything being perfect and focused on making it feel like home. Mia's eyes sparkled with pride as she looked at her friend. I can see that. And it's beautiful. As their friends arrived, the house filled with laughter and warmth, the sound of voices mingling with the soft background music that played from Rachel's carefully curated playlist. The conversations flowed easily, everyone catching up, sharing stories and celebrating the small triumphs and milestones that marked their lives. Rachel found herself moving through the gathering, her heart swelling with gratitude as she watched her friends interact. 
Each of them was unique, with their own quirks, dreams, and challenges, and yet they fit together, forming a tapestry of friendship that was more vibrant and meaningful than any plan or vision she could have orchestrated. At one point, Mia caught Rachel's eye and gestured toward the kitchen, a mischievous smile on her face. Rachel followed her, curiosity peaked. What's up, Rachel asked, leaning against the counter as Mia rummaged through her bag. Mia pulled out a small, wrapped gift, her expression shy but excited. I wanted to give you something, a little. Thank you for everything. Rachel's heart fluttered as she took the gift, carefully unwrapping it to reveal a framed photo. It was a picture of them from Rachel's wedding day, taken during the quiet moment they had shared after the ceremony. In the photo, they were sitting together, Rachel in her wedding dress, Mia in her dark, sentimental gown, their hands clasped, their expressions filled with a quiet, unspoken understanding. The frame bore an inscription at the bottom, a simple line that captured the essence of their bond. True friendship doesn't need perfection, only love. Rachel felt a lump form in her throat as she looked at the photo, her emotions swirling. She glanced up at Mia, her eyes shimmering with gratitude. Mia, this is perfect. Thank you. I don't know what to say. Mia smiled, reaching out to squeeze Rachel's hand. You don't have to say anything, Reich. I just wanted you to have this to remember how far we've come. Rachel pulled Mia into a tight embrace, her heart filled with a deep, unshakable sense of love and gratitude. I'll cherish it forever, Mia. Thank you. They shared a quiet moment, their friendship solidified in a way that transcended words. It was a friendship that had been tested, reshaped, and ultimately strengthened by the lessons they had learned from each other. As the afternoon turned to evening, Rachel found herself sitting with her husband on their front porch, watching the golden hues of the sunset spill over the rooftops. She leaned against him, her head resting on his shoulder, a contented sigh escaping her lips. You seem happy, he remarked, his voice gentle. Rachel nodded, her heart swelling with a quiet joy. I am. For the first time in a long time, I feel like. I'm exactly where I need to be. I used to think happiness was something you had to chase, something you could only find by achieving some perfect vision, but now I realize it's about finding beauty in the imperfect moments. The connections we make, the love we share. Her husband smiled, pressing a kiss to her forehead. I'm glad you found that, Rachel. It's a beautiful thing to see. Rachel looked out over the city, her heart filled with a profound sense of peace. She knew that life would still bring its share of challenges, that there would be moments of doubt and struggle. But she also knew that she was surrounded by people who loved her, who supported her, who accepted her for who she truly was. And that, she realized, was more precious than any dream of perfection. A few days later, Rachel decided to write Mia a letter, a heartfelt message that captured everything she hadn't been able to say in person. Sitting at her desk, she let her thoughts flow freely, pouring her heart onto the paper. Dear Mia, I just wanted to take a moment to thank you for being there for me, for forgiving me, for reminding me of what truly matters. You've shown me that love isn't about grand gestures or flawless moments, it's about the quiet, unassuming support, the acceptance of each other's imperfections, the belief that we are enough just as we are. You've taught me more about friendship than I ever thought possible. You've shown me that true beauty lies in the resilience of the people we love, in the moments of laughter and tears, in the memories we create together. Thank you, Mia, for being my friend, for standing by me through the good times and the bad. I am so grateful to have you in my life, and I look forward to many more years of laughter, love, and shared adventures. With all my love, Rachel. Rachel sealed the letter, her heart swelling with a mixture of gratitude and love. She placed it in an envelope and planned to give it to Mia the next time they met, knowing that her friend would appreciate the sentiment. As she set the letter aside, Rachel felt a renewed sense of purpose a conviction that she would carry the lessons Mia had taught her into every part of her life. She had learned that true happiness didn't come from chasing perfection, but from embracing the beauty of life's imperfections, from finding joy in the unexpected moments and the connections that gave her life meaning. For the first time, Rachel felt truly at peace with herself, her heart filled with gratitude for the journey that had brought her to this point. And as she looked toward the future, she knew that, no matter what lay ahead, she was ready to face it with love, resilience, 
and the unwavering support of the people who mattered most. In that moment, Rachel knew that she had found her own version of happiness, a happiness that was real, imperfect, and deeply, beautifully hers.